asking, asking, is this policy necessary and when would this come up? Um, and I actually have had a little bit more time to think about this also in light of a few of the policies that were adopted or that, that have been presented for second reading and one that's going to be presented for first reading. I think it makes sense to have policy BFE, CHD in situations where the law has changed and the school board has not been able to come up to date to pass a policy in enough time to have a policy in place. Um, so I've proposed language in red at line 7 and 8 to say um, where it's necessary for the school division to take, access to, to take action and it's necessary for the school board to adopt a policy. So this would only apply in the case where there is not a policy, there's a, a need for a policy because either the Virginia legislature has changed and has directed the school board to adopt a policy and the board has not adopted one yet or maybe there's a case law decision that's come out and the board hasn't reconvened and the issue comes before the superintendent. The superintendent has to take an action, present it to the school board, the school board has to um, review that action and then at the same time the superintendent brings the action before the school board, the superintendent informs the board that they need to um, have a policy to cover this in the future. So it's not that the superintendent's decisions would be hindered if there's not a policy, but if there needs to be a policy and there isn't one existing, then this policy would be in place to allow the superintendent to take action, have that action reviewed by the school board. Questions about BFE and the proposed addition or anything else about BFE? Madam Chair, so what if you were to add something if the, if the superintendent notifies the board of the need for a new policy and the board does not reasonably promulgate a policy, then the superintendent could ask, could, could, could act, unless there's some crazy wild emergency. But, but it does, it, it just, I, I, I have a visceral dislike of the superintendent getting out in front of the board on a matter of policy mm -hmm. and I also think the board should if there if you need a policy the board should have a special meeting and come up with a policy mm -hmm. but I, I think it's I, I don't like the idea that the, the superintendent can just get out in front and, and do something both because it's not good for the superintendent and it's not good for the board right I do think that this is is written to be narrowly construed where it says where action must be taken by the school division and the school board has not provided guidance for administrative action and it's necessary for the school board to adopt a policy. So I think in a dream world, particularly once the board is fully moved to the VSBA model policies, the VSBA guidance we can follow and we can quickly adopt policies um, that allow us to address concerns in real time. Right now we're still behind by a few hundred policies. So there are some policies that the VSBA recommends us having where we have holes. The perfect example is the one that we going to do on first reading for animal dissection. We handle it right now, but we don't have a policy in place, and we should. But I, I think during that lag time, I, I definitely hear your concern. I think until we're up to date with all the VSBA um, policies, it's difficult for us to anticipate what is going to come up next that's going to be an issue that's going to require action. And I do know that when we have issues come up now, we're looking at our policies. Then we're looking at the VSBA model policy that we're going to be moving to to see if the law or the citations are different and then making a decision to see what we're going to do going forward. So it certainly is going to be easier once we've been able to get through all the policies and move to the model policies. And, and I think it's fair to say that we've actually shuffled around the order of policy adoption to meet more critical needs that have come up um, before we've taken action as well. So I, but I, I take your concern. So it's a, an imperfect approach, but I do think that it is necessary to have something right now. Um, and we could bring it back for third reading and look at other language to have, but knowing that we are so far behind on the VSBA model policies, I think this is one that I would, I would encourage the board to move forward on, recognizing that we can change it back after we're up to date, because we are quite behind. That's fine, but I'll vote against it. Understood. The last policy for tonight is policy CH, um, policy dissemination, regulation, development, um, and there are no policy, no proposed changes to this policy from first reading. Any questions on policy CH? Okay. Oh, great. So um, thank you, Ms. Minson. Um, I would seek a motion um, as amended, as discussed previously um, that the school board approves second reading adoption of the discussed policies with amendments. 
Would you like Mr. Anderson to assist you? Sure. Um, but could I ask for, um, in anticipation of, of Mr. Castillo's comment, mm -hmm. should we pull out that one BFE um, and make a separate motion for that? Okay. Set. That's fine. Okay. I, I just have a point of order. Did, did you propose the amendment? Uh, yes. No, no, no. I, I, the, the, sure. Yeah, I, I, I propose <laughs> the amendment of the language to replace citizen with okay. members of the public. So. And then that gets back in line. I didn't actually make a formal motion to that effect. Oh, yeah. I proposed the language, and we didn't actually That's go further than that. Is it a friend friendly amendment? Not an inconsistent. Yeah, no, I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then. So um, I'm going to be making two motions. Then I think. Great. Okay. So, Madam Chair, I move that the school board adopt second reading and adoption of the following policies: Policy IKF, the Virginia Assessment Program and Graduation Requirement. IKEV acceleration, IAA notification of learning objectives, IKH retaking SOL assessments, IGAH family life education, BFC policy adoption, BF board policy manual, and uh, CH policy dissemination and regulation development with the language change suggesting moving on BF of citizen to members of the public or okay. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Webb. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstained? Okay. okay. And Madam Chair, I move that the school board approve second reading and adoption of policy BFE administration and policy absence. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Webb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Abstain? All right. It passes with one objection. Um, thank you very much. Next, uh, we will do 8.07, approval of first reading of policies. Ms. Minson. Yes. Tonight for first reading, there are three policies. The first is policy IGAK, Alternatives to Animal Dissection. Um, this is consistent with what um, our schools are currently doing for animal dissection, but there's currently no policy. Um, so propose that the board adopt this policy that does provide alternatives to animal dissection to those who are interested. Um, any just questions? To the point of note, it, it is IGAC is the <laughs> which, which policy well. number, yeah. <laughs> which animal works dissection. well for animal dissection. <laughs> any questions on IGAC? All right. Uh, second policy is policy IKA, parental assistance with instruction. This is fairly low-hanging fruit, and it lines um, fairly closely with our current policy 6.11. Any questions on policy IKA? Hearing none, last policy IGBB, programs for gifted students. This would replace policy 6.24. Um, this is consistent with what we are currently doing um, and does um, follow most of the language of our current policy 6.24. Um, policy 6.24 does have some of the um, prefatory, more flowery language talking about the goals of, of Falls Church City Schools. In, in some ways, it's um, a bit inconsistent with what our current goals are for the school year. The idea of enhancing aptitude, fostering academic achievement, and nurturing creativity, that's done across the board for all students, not just for gifted students. So I do think it makes sense here to hew to the language of the VSBA. Questions on policy IGBB? Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, I'll point out again, same sort of language on line eight, citizens. Uh, it's, so it's the language says the division will ensure that printed copies of the plan are available to citizens who do not have online access. Mm -hmm. I would move that we change that to members of the public instead of citizens. Noted. Any, uh, any other questions or comments on the first reading of these policies? All right, I would seek a motion that the school board approve first reading of the policies as discussed. With uh, Madam Chair, I move the school board approve first reading of policies IGAK, Alternatives to Animal Dissection, I, IKA, 
parental assistance with instructions. Is that the S? And IGBB programs for gifted students as amended by what? The I don't student. even know that we. I don't think we need to because it's first reading. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sure. That's okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Lydon. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Great. Can Thank I ask you, Ms. Minson. Follow-on question. Yeah. Um, just for uh, future reference, is it the will of the board for us to consider? changing all language like we have with pronouns but instead of using the word citizen begin using members of the public Just show of hands just make sure we yeah, I, I would support it unless there's some specific instance okay. that says citizen okay. Scott right. there. Okay. All right, we've got um, future agenda items, 9.01. Does anyone have any future agenda items for the board for us to discuss? Mr. Webb. Just, I know we've kind of mentioned it before, but, but a conversation about uh, Mr. Thee's uh, comments at some point, I don't know what the right time is, but just at some point to have that, pull the band off and have that conversation at some point in a, in a work session. Okay. Anything else? All right, we'll move on to uh, 10.01, the superintendent's report. Great, thank you. Um, just a few updates tonight. Um, first is just to say thank you to our um, uh, our super grants. Uh, well, first of all, thanks to the Ed Foundation for their incredible support of our super grants. Um, this last couple of weeks, um, myself and members of our leadership team and members of the Ed Foundation board um, announced 88935 thousand dollars in grants that were delivered to our teachers um, and it was a uh, just a really great prize patrol day like we have quite often and um, really saw some cool things um, that our that our teachers are going to be doing um, and on that note from the Falls Church Ed Foundation world I want to congratulate Sharon Scholler and her husband Ed Salzberg um, the Chamber of Commerce announced that their annual awards last week um, and they were present, will be presented at the Chamber Gala at the State Theater on Friday, November 15th, um, that Sharon and Ed have received their highest award, the Pillar of the Community Award. So if you see Sharon and Ed, make sure um, you, you say something to them. Sharon is a true um, FCCPS volunteer uh, extraordinaire. As many of you know, she was the chair of the Ed Special Education Advisory Committee in the early 1990s. She's been part of the group of the parents who lobbied the school system to become one of the first inclusive school divisions in the state um, and transform and was very transformative. She's also served as president at all of the PTAs and currently served as a, as a board um, member on the board of directors and is always there for the Super Grant Prize Patrol. Um, when she was, uh, when it was announced that she was going to be, uh, she and her husband were going to be named the pillars of the community, um, she she said it was like the prize patrol came to her house and said it was a really nice change. So anyway, congratulations to Sharon and Ed on their incredible work. Um, the Falls Church Ed, uh, or I'm sorry, the, yeah, the FCE PTA book fair is going to be held at TJ at the end of October. Was held and it was very <laughs> successful. Excuse me. Um, and all of our element, elementary classes got new books, um, and the libraries all benefited from that. Uh, at Mount Daniel, um, our evening shuttle buses to Mount Daniel uh, will get a workout in the next couple of weeks. Uh, very popular science in the night sky is coming up. Um, it's a really great evening program. If you haven't been there to see that, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's also a new second grade evening musical program coming up uh, on next Wednesday. And the theme is, what are we thankful for? And this is uh, the first Mount Daniel second grade special event. Thankful for second grade. Thankful for second grade. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Thomas Jefferson, uh, fourth grade students will take their annual trip to Jamestown on Thursday. Uh, always a great trip. And we're really proud um, to, uh, again, it was earlier noted that our uh, Family Resource Center held a great open house um, and a parent university session. Uh, in English interpreted into Spanish about uh, about Schoology and Power School for Parents uh, has been done, and the second session is uh, on Thursday. At Henderson, uh, we had our first student council-led town hall, uh, and it was attended by more than 100 students, and the agenda items discussed were issues of students' concern, uh, including transitions times from class to class, um, carrying backpacks versus using lockers, questions on candidate promises, 
uh, by current officers, whether they're maintaining their promises or not. Good lesson in civic leadership early. Um, and uh, 